Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to go ahead and cover a few more questions off of the arithmetic reasoning portion of the ASVAB. So let's go ahead and dive right in and let's see what we can learn. New test, who dis? All right, so we got another arithmetic reasoning portion of the ASVAB. In this case, we're looking at a bread recipe calls for three and one fourth cup of flour. If you only have two and an eighth cup, how much more flour do you need? Here's the deal. I know that I cannot do anything in terms of adding or subtracting with fractions unless I have the same number on the bottom. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this three and one fourth. And instead, I'm going to say, OK, I got one fourth. I need eight to be on the bottom right? So what do I multiply by to get from four to eight? I multiply by two. Well, when you're moving up in fractions like this, you also need to multiply the same thing by the top. So I'm going to go ahead and do one times two as well to give me two over eight. So this actually be rewritten as three and two eighths. Now, that's how much it calls for. We already have two and one eighth. So if I add one full cup I can get from that 2 to that 3. And if I add another 1 eighth, I can get from that 1 eighth to 2 eighth. So that means I still need to add 1 and 1 eighth to get my final answer here, and that's going to be A. Get ready for number two off the ASVAB, which is the military engines exam. So number two says, how many omelets can be made from two dozen eggs if an omelet contains three eggs? I guess the hard part of this question is knowing if what a dozen eggs are. I don't know. I mean, if you don't know what a dozen is, then go buy some eggs. But a dozen means that you have 12 eggs. So if I have two dozen, then I have 12 and 12, two of them, all right? That is going to be a total of 24 eggs. Well, in this case, it says that one omelet, an omelet, contains three eggs. And they want to know how many omelets we can make. Well, if I have 24 eggs, and I need to know how many times I can divide that up in the groups of three, because there's three eggs per omelet, then I'm just doing 24 divided by 3. So what is 24 divided by 3? Well, if you know your times tables, then 3 times 8 is what gives you that 24. So 24 divided by 3 is going to give us 8, which means our final answer to this question is D, 8 omelets. Watch out, we got a runner. Just kidding. It's number three for the as It says two runners finished the race in 80 seconds. Another runner finished the race in 72 seconds. And the final runner finished in 68 seconds. The average of these times is what? So the key here is just noting how do you find the average. So the average is usually found by adding all of the numbers in your data set and then dividing by however many numbers that is. The key here is that two of them are hitting 80. So you're actually looking at 80 plus another 80, plus that 72, and plus that 68. And although this may seem like a lot to do without a calculator, it's not so rough when you realize what these four numbers actually add to. So if I'm looking at this, 8 and 2 will give me 0, carry the 1. And then, looking at this, we have 8 and another 8, giving me, what, 16? And then if I take 4 from this, that will give me the 20, and then I would still have, what, another two left over plus that one and that one. So this is actually going to give me a total of 30. So this is an even 300. Now it doesn't seem so bad. Now the key here is once you get that 300, you then still have to divide that by 4 because that's how many numbers are in this data set. So let's see here. How many times does 4 go into 30. Well, I know that 4 times 7 is 28, and going up to 8 would put me at 32, so that's too far. So 7's the first number, which, duh, so is all the answers. All right, so we go, and that's 2 left over. And then how many times does 4 go into 20? And that's going to be 5 times. So that means our final answer here should be 75 seconds. It looks like that answer is going to be option C. Number four on the ASVAB says, if 400 people can be seated in eight subway cars, how many people can be seated in five subway cars? So this is kind of a two-step problem. The first thing we're going to have to find out is with this 400 people in eight, we're going to be able to find out how many total people can be in a subway car. Then we'll use that to essentially multiply that by five to find out how many total would be in five cars. Now, there's different ways you can go about doing this, but I'm just going to do it pretty straightforward because these numbers will work well together. But essentially, we have 400 people, and we're going to be splitting that up across eight subway cars. So we're essentially dividing by eight. So how many times does eight go into 400? Remember, no calculator here. So eight goes into 40 five times. 
8 times 5 gives you 40. And then you still got that 0, so we get to add a 0 on over here. Now this means that 50 people are going to fit per car. We have 5 of those cars, so now we're going to go back and multiply this 50 by 5 to see how many we're going to end up with in the 5 cars. So 5 times 0 is still 0. 5 times 5 is 25. So we're looking at a total of 250 people in 5 subway cars. So our answer here is B. Number five on the ESPUB says an employee earns eight twenty-five an hour in thirty hours. What earnings has the employee made? So essentially, we're just doing thirty times this guy up here. All right. There's lots of different ways we can go about doing this. Um, I'm going to break it down into two parts. I'm going to do eight times that thirty. And I'm going to do the 25 cents times that 30. And then I'm going to end up adding those two together. And I'll talk about why as we go. So if I do 8 times 30, I'm confident that I can just do 8 times 3 to give me 24. And I can tack that 0 on the end. So already right off the bat, if I had to guess, my answer is probably going to be A because this is 240 alone. We just haven't done these 30, 25 cents yet. Now, I know that 25 is a quarter of a whole dollar, right? Well, that means that it would take four of these to give me one dollar, and I'm multiplying that by 30, which means I can essentially do 30 divided by four, because it's per dollar, and we'll end up getting how many dollars that would be. So if I do 30 divided by four, that's going to end up giving me, well, seven times four is 28, eight times four is 32, so 30 is right in the middle of those two, so 7.5. That means that if I do 30 divided by 4, it's going to give me 750. So in other words, 30 times 0.25 will give me 750. Now, if you don't believe that, multiplying by 0.25 would be the same thing as multiplying by 1 over 4, because again, those two are equal. And if you're multiplying by 1 over 4, that's the same thing as dividing by 4. So again, that's what gets us to this answer here. Well, now we can see easily 240 plus that 750 is indeed 247.5. That's going to be a final answer of B. Number six on the ESVAB says there are 72 freshmen in the band. If freshmen make up one third of the entire band, the total number of students in the band is what? So here's the deal. This is kind of one of those things where it's like, hey, if I throw a 72 and a one third, all of those people that just are like, well, I never know what to do in word problems, so I just multiply the numbers together, will end up getting this wrong because 72 times one third is actually going to give you a smaller number, um, probably at 24. And the purpose for this is to weed that type of thing thinking out. Um, so just think about this. 72 freshmen in the band. That's not the whole band. It's just a third of them. Like it, That's just a piece of it. So your answer should be larger than 72. So already some of these are removed. Now with that said, we have two options left. Well, in this case, essentially you're saying 72 is one third of it. So in other words, 72 times three will give you the whole thing because if 72 is one third, then that means 72 plus another 72 plus another 72 would give you the whole, all right? Well, 72 times two gives you the 144. So 72 times the three must give us, and indeed does, the 216. Final answer, D. So I guess number seven is just checking our budgeting skills here on the ESVAB. So it says here, Dana receives $30 for her birthday and $15 for cleaning the garage. If she spends $16 on a CD, how much money does she have left? Now, the name of the game here is speed. So although it's going to take me a bit to explain, this should be a very quick question to do. And here's why. I am not going to do 30 plus 15 get an answer, which would be 45, and then subtract 16 to get the next answer. That would be wasting precious seconds. Instead, I would recognize that, hey, she received 15 for cleaning the garage, and she spent 16 on a CD. Well, the difference there is one, one dollar. So that means that she spent one dollar more than what she made in the garage. So the moment I realized that this and this is really just subtracting one from ever how much money she had, because that's one dollar more she spent, then that means I can just find this answer within seconds by doing 30 minus one. Well, 30 minus one is 29, so our answer here is A. 
looking at number eight on the ASVAB. It says a television is on sale for 20% off. If the sale price is 800, what was the original price? So here's the deal. You may be able to see this within seconds in your head and don't do it, but I'm going to work it out just in case it's not something this easy. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But if this were the case, this is saying that $800 is equal to whatever the original price was times essentially 80%, 0.80, because you move the decimal over twice to get to a decimal. Now, why did I do 80% not 20%? Because 20% off means that you're paying 80% of the original price. So we're going to find out what 80% of that is. Now, in this case, that means that we would need to solve for x by dividing both sides by 0.80, the 80%. And if I'm looking at this, well, 800 divided by 0.80 would end up giving me one, but because I got to move this over here, that's going to give me one zero. And then I have this zero and this zero. So that means that our original price for X was actually 1000, which is answer D. Number nine on the SVAP says Stacy earns 9.50 an hour plus 3% commission on all sales made. If her total sales during a 30 hour work week were $500, how much did she earn? So here's the deal we got two sections to this question. First off, we have the 9.50 that they are, that Stacy here is earning over 30 hours. So multiplying the two of those. And that will give one thing. The other thing is finding out what is 3%. Of that $500 that she made so that we can add that for the commission. So those are her two ways of making money. We add them together. We get our final answer. Instead of doing all of this out, you could just do the, you know, three times zero, three times five. But in your head, a way of thinking about this would be that you are technically doing $10 almost, right? Minus the 50 cents. $10 times this 30 would be a total of $300, right? And in your head, you could quickly think like, hey, 30 times the 50 cents, that's shy of the $10. 30 times that 50 cents would be half of 30, because 0.5 times 30 would be $15. So really, if I multiply the two of those together, it's the same as doing 300 minus 15. Again, for people that are like, oh, that takes too long to do, there's no calculator here. So for some people, that line of thinking is a little bit faster than this, and I think you guys can do this on your own. For this guy over here, we have 3 times 0, which is 0, 3 times 0, which is 0, 3 times 5, which is 15, and we have a decimal place, two places is over so move it over and you got that so in total we have 285 from this revenue plus the 15 dollars from this revenue giving us a total of 300 dollars. our answer here is d be careful number 10 it says the area of one circle is four times as large as the smaller circle with a radius of three inches the radius of the larger circle is what so the immediate response here is usually to be like oh well if the bigger one is four times as big as then the smaller one then just do this guy times four which is going to end up giving you 12 and that's the answer right no so let's talk about this so in this case, you have a radius of 3. Well, the area of the circle is pi times the radius squared. In this case, the radius is 3, so that's 3 squared. All right? So that's the area of this guy is essentially 3 squared, which is 9, times that pi. Now, in order to go from this to this guy up here, we have to multiply that whole thing by 4. Now, it is commutative, so we can just go ahead and do 4 times 9, telling me the area of this big circle up here is actually going to be 36, 4 times 9, pi. Well, we know that the area formula for a circle, we just used it here, is pi r squared, meaning that whatever that number is right there, if you take the square root of it, that's going to end up giving us this radius. Well, the square root of 36 is not 12. The square root of 36 is 6. So our final answer here is actually D. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today, but remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ASVAB.